Hi guys, this is Sadek from Droidwin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to install the Dubface ROM based on Android 13 onto your OnePlus 70. So let's get started. First and foremost, you'll have to be on the Android 11 or CNOS 11 firmware. If you are on OxygenOS 12 firmware, then please download it to OxygenOS 11. You could do so using the guide which I linked in the description. There are, are three different ways of downloading. First one is via the official firmware that OnePlus releases. Next up, you could make use of the MSM tool and the EDL mode. Thirdly, there is a fast boot enhanced tool. You could also downgrade using this tool as well. So refer to my guide, which I've given in the description, and then perform the downgrade and, and go back to the Android 11 Oxygen OS 11 firmware. Once you are on Android 11 firmware, you are now good to go ahead and flash this ROM. So first off, please take a backup of all the data on your phone. Once you have done so, you will have to install the Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB commands. So download it from the guide given in the link and then extract it onto your PC. In my case, I've done the extraction in E drive. You could extract it anywhere you want. Once that is done, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB commands, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now enable both this toggle. For that, go to the settings menu on your phone. From settings menu, go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. Once that is done, go back. Now go to system and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. So now type on OK in the prompt that appears. As you could see in my case, in case of OEM unlocking is already enabled and my booter is already unlocked. That's why it's already grayed out. In your case, it might not be grayed out if the booter is locked. So if the booter is unlocked, it would be grayed out. Otherwise, it should be as it is. So make sure to enable both this toggle. Once that is done, let's now verify the ADB debugging connection. So go to the platform tools folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window with the platform tools folder directory as you could see. Now type in ADB devices and make sure your phone is showing a serial ID. If it is not showing any serial ID, then unplug and replug your phone to the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging. Likewise, tap on revoke USB debugging or use the official USB cable and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC and not the 3.0 port. So carry out these USB tweaks and make sure you're getting a serial ID. Once you're getting this ID, you are now good to go ahead. Next up, you'll now have to grab hold of the ROM file. So let's first download the ROM and recovery file from the link given in the description. Download them and then transfer them to the platform tools folder. The GApps come inbuilt with the ROM. So no need to install GApps, just download the ROM and recovery file. Once you've got hold of both this file, transfer them to the platform tools folder and just now rename it to something shorter for the sake of convenience. So let's rename the ROM file to simply ROM so that the complete name becomes ROM.zip and in the case of recovery, let's simply rename it to recovery so that the complete name becomes recovery.img. It will now become easier to type in the CMD window. Once we have done this, we should now boot our phone to the fastboot mode and unlock the bootloader. So for booting to the fastboot mode, open CMD inside platform tool folder and type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter. Your phone should now boot to the fast boot mode and it should only take a few seconds. So let's wait for the time frame and as you could see it's now in the fast boot mode. First off, let's now verify the fast boot connection. So type in fast boot devices and hit enter. Make sure you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting a serial ID, then you'll have to install the fast boot drivers. The link of that is given in the description. So please go ahead and install the fast boot drivers. Likewise, you could also verify by using the Windows X shortcut key, then selecting device manager and expand the Android phone section. Under the Android phone section, make sure it's listed as Android bootloader interface. This signifies that your phone is in the fast boot mode and your PC is able to identify the phone in fast boot mode. So Android bootloader interface as well as the serial ID signifies that your phone is in the fast boot mode and you could not flash the ROM. So in this regard, you'll first have to unlock the bootloader. Do keep in mind that doing so would wipe off all the data and could nullify the warranty as well. If that's well and good, then just type in fast boot flashing unlock and hit enter. You will now get the prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to select unlock the bootloader and hit the power key to confirm. Your device will undergo a reset and it will unlock the bootloader. Once that is done, you, your phone should automatically boot to the fast boot mode itself. And now you should see the device state as unlocked. This signifies that the bootloader has been unlocked and now you are good to go ahead. So first and foremost, we'll have to flash the recovery to the recovery partition. This is the Dubface recovery itself. So make sure you have downloaded the recovery and place it in the platform tools folder. Likewise, the name of the recovery file should be recovery.img, as you could see. So let's now flash the recovery file using the 
command given here simply copy paste this command copy this command and type it in the cmd window which is there in the platform tools folder just to reiterate make sure you have renamed the recovery file to recovery.img if that will not good then type in this command and hit enter it will now flash the recovery and the process should only take a few seconds once that is done you could now boot your phone to the recovery mode for that you could use the volume keys to bring up the recovery option and press the power key to confirm or you could also use the fast boot reboot recovery command and hit enter your phone should now boot to the dot first recovery so let's wait while that is happening and it should only take a few seconds so our phone is currently booting to the dot first recovery and as you could see it's now in the recovery mode so now what you have to do is first and foremost you have to reset your phone so just to let me show you you first and foremost have to factory reset your phone this will remove all the data from your device as well so make sure you have made the backup beforehand so now go to factory reset and select format data factory reset again select format data and your phone will undergo a reset and it should only take a few seconds as you could see in the bottom left we are getting the data wipe complete message so this signifies that the format is complete and you should now go back to the main screen and from here you should now install the dofest rom via adb side load so first and foremost go to apply update then select apply from adb once that is done your phone is now in the adb side load mode you could also verify the adb side load mode by going to the cmd window and type in adb devices this will show your device as side load and this signifies that the phone is in the side load mode so let's now simply flash the rom via the adb side load and then the name of the rom file in our case is simply rom.zip so type in rom.zip and hit enter the side load process will now begin and you should see it will first verify the update package and this process could take up to around 5 to 6 minutes while that is going on you could keep a track of the same from your phone as well and from the cmd window as well in most cases in the cmd window the process gets stuck at 47 percent it's just a ui bug and nothing to worry about so even if get stuck at 47 percent for around five to six minutes you should leave it in that state and you should instead keep a track of the same from your phone itself so i will show you that as well once it reaches the 47 percent apart from that when the adb side loaded process is complete you would get a total transfer one into message but that is not the only message that you could get in some cases you might get a few error as well so this is the message that you usually get but apart from that you might also get these four adb messages such as adb fail to read command no success no error success and 47 percent adb as well as adb fail to read command undefined error so all these four messages also signifies that the process has been completed successfully so if you get any of these five messages there's nothing to worry about all these five means the same that the side load has been successfully done and there's no cause of any concern moreover as i have told you before the process might get stuck at 47 percent in the cmd window so let me show you if that happens or not if that does not happen then it's not an issue and even if that happens then also it's not an issue and we could easily bypass that so let me show you currently as you could see it's in the 47 percent and from now onwards it will not move ahead it will not move ahead rather you will have to keep a track from your phone as of now it's on the step one of two and the step one of two only takes quite a lot of time the step two of two only takes a few seconds so it's a major step and it takes around 99 percent of the time for example if the process is of six minutes then up to five minutes and 50 seconds will be taken by this step and only the last 10 to 15 seconds are taken by the second step so let's wait while that is happening and let's wait for the time frame the process should take a few seconds so apart from that i have also made a guide on various other custom ROM for OnePlus 70. These include the CR Droid, Lineage OS, Pixel Experience, Extended XT ROMs as well. So all those ROMs are based on Android 13 and you could check out my guide as well as my video on YouTube on how to fix those issues. So let's now check out the results. So as of now, it's currently still on step one of two. So let's wait for the time frame. And as I have told you before, this is the only ROM which is based on Oxygen OS 11 firmware. So I have read many places that all the ROMs that are based on all the Android 13 ROMs that are based on Oxygen OS 12 firmware have got a lot of bugs such as the auto brightness issues, fingerprint issues, issues with camera quality as well. But all the ROMs based on Android 13 which have which is based on the Android 11 firmware or Oxygen OS 11 firmware they do not have any issues as such and at the time of recording the Dove Face is the only ROM which houses the oxygen os 11 firmware but is based on android 13 
So if you're looking for a ROM that has the system files on of Optimus 11 and is based on Android 13, as of now, this is the only ROM and it's the USB of this ROM that you need to be on Android 11 itself. There's no need to be on Android 12. And if by chance you're on Android 12, then you could downgrade using this guide. Anyways, as you could see, the process is now complete. And you, in the CMD window, you should see the message as total transfer one and two. Likewise, on my phone, you could see step two of two is completed. Once that is done, you could now easily boot your phone to the OS. So let me show you that. So once the process is done, you just need to select the go back and now select reboot system now. Let me focus on. So just type on reboot system now and your phone will now boot to the OS. Do keep in mind that this is the first boot up. So this boot up might take up a few additional seconds and it will be slightly longer than the additional subsequent boot up. This is because the OS being loaded for the first time and your device has also undergone a factory reset. So this is completely normal and this is the boot animation of the Dove-Face ROM. So let's wait while this is loading. And as I, I have told you before, the first boot up will take up a few additional seconds. Moreover, the ROM comes inbuilt with gapps, all the Google app packages. So it would also load the Google apps and services and framework. So this would also take up a few additional seconds. That is why the boot up will be a little bit slower as compared to Lineage OS, which does not have the GF package and all the other custom ROM that comes inbuilt with GF, such as the Pixel Experience ROM and all such ROMs, usually take a few additional seconds to boot up. And moreover, since we have just re reinstalled our phone, so that, that is why it was longer. But as you could see, the process has not been completed and we are in the Dovefish ROM. So it has not been flashed and let's get started with the process so i as of now skipping the initial set, set, setup i'll be setting up offline as well so let's simply bypass all the screen and show you the rom so since i am skipping the process it might be a faster boot up so as you could see it has all the subsequent google app packages as well for example gmail google photos play store and this is the app drawer this is the home screen and this is the settings menu as you could see Let's now access the settings menu from here and this is the system page and this is the Doveface updater. It's the latest Android 13 version as you could see from here and you could download and install the subsequent OTA updates from this page itself. No need to do ATB cycle every time. Apart from that, it has a few additional sections such as the USB configuration is given right here itself. In stock ROM, it's under developer option, but in this case, it's right here in the system, which is definitely quite a good move then it has some oneplus settings page as well then apart from that let's check out what else does it have so dub space it's the usb of this rom it's the specific rom features up from battery settings to clock date settings status bar items traffic indicators miscellaneous tweaks as well so it does have a few additional tweaks and apart from that it has notification, quick settings, lock screen UI, ambient always on display, and some other customization as well as the pulse. So you could try out these tweaks onto your device. And so, guys, with that, we round off this video. If you have any queries, do let me know in the comment section. And please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.